Hi and welcome to the channel. Today I'm going to be showing you how you can create this fillable digital or printable form in Word. So I'm going to take you through it step by step. If you just want to find out how to do the fillable part then you'll just have to scroll towards the end of the video. So I will speed up the video when we get to the monotonous parts of just filling out the text so you won't have to sit through everything but I will give you all the instructions about how you can create this form. So let's open a new document and the first thing to do is just to press the return key just so you've got a little bit of customization ability above the table. Go to insert, go to tables, click on the drop down and this doesn't really matter because there is so much customization you can do to tables but I just whiz across to five columns and just go all the way down until I've inserted a rough table with five columns in it. Now when my tables are inserted they're always really narrow rows so I generally select my table by clicking on this top left square, go to table layout and then in the height here you can use these arrows or you can put in a specific number. I'm going to put 0.8 in and press enter just to make those a little wider and then I usually select this one here but today I'm going to select a line to bottom left for all of my text. So just to show you how you can merge cells because obviously the first one we're going to have a title across here I'm going to select all of those cells and then in the table layout tab go to merge cells then I'm just going to insert my text and then what I will do is for this first part is I'm just going to put more text in some of these boxes and when there's more information to tell you then I'll stop the video and tell you what you need to know next. Okay so I've come to the end of this first block and I want to move on to a new block for the report details so what I will do is I will actually leave a space by merging all of these cells here so I leave a space to my next block of information. Now I'm going to run out of rows so I'm going to select the bottom one make sure I'm on table layout and I'm going to cross to insert below and I'm just going to keep clicking so I insert all the rows almost to the bottom and then carry on inserting my information starting off with the title again so again I'm going to merge this cell and then carry on inserting those details. Once again I'm going to leave a gap, merge the cells, then for this one I actually want a formal table, let me just show you, I want this table here. So what I'm actually going to do is split the table. So I'm going to put my cursor here, go to table layout and click split cell, and it will, or split table sorry, and it will split the table and then we can go on to a brand new table. Now you will notice because I've been typing up here it's nudged this first column to make it wider. So to equal them all out again I'm going to select the whole table. In table layout go to distribute columns here and then it will make all of those columns equal again. So once again merge this top cell, go to merge cells and carry on entering in your text. Now for this one I want two more items so I'm going to have to split this column here but before I do that because I know I'm only going to want about four of these lines I'm going to come down to the fifth one here and go back up to split table just so that I can make the effect only happen to the table in the middle here. So I'm going to select this column here and go to split cells, number of columns two number of rows 5 and click OK and as you can see that split it and I'm just going to grab this line here and move it over and I will even these out in a second then I'm just going to select these bottom rows here and then go to distribute columns and you can see they've evened themselves out now if you want them all to fit then select them all go to the home tab and go to decrease font size and as you decrease the font size you'll see that they will all then fit and you can go to table layout and go to this center alignment tool here. Now I'll go back up and align everything else in a minute 
But first of all, we're going to get all of the information in first. So again, I'm going to merge this row here, merge, and then carry on entering in my text. Again, I'm going to merge to make a space for my next block of information. I merge for the title. I'm just going to merge a couple of cells here because they are long titles to the questions. Then I'm just going to put a few more rows below. Don't worry about the second page, I'll show you how to sort that out because we want all this on one page. Okay, so we've roughly got all of our text in now, so it's just a question of making the whole table make sense and then making it digital and also putting it on one page. So the first thing to putting it on one page is to adjust the margins. So if you can see your rulers here, if you can't, go to view, make sure rulers are checked. And then down at the bottom here, hover your cursor between the white and gray section and you'll see it changes and just click and pull that down. That will give you some additional space on your page and as you can see now we're down to one page. So I'm going to select all of the titles and turn them bold. I can do this all at once. So select one, hold down your command or control key on your keyboard and then go ahead and select all of the titles. I'm going to select this one as well and this one. Then go to home and click bold and then I'm going to select this top table Go to table design and go along to this borders icon here. Now this is the one we're going to concentrate on quite a lot. We're going to take all the borders off and then we're going to use this border painter here which allows you to put individual lines back in. So click on border painter and then just hover over the line you want to put back in and click. It doesn't always do the entire line so sometimes you have to click the individual column lines and then here you can see we've got some cells that we need to merge so let's click back on border painter which will take it off let's go to borders and go down to view grid lines now these grid lines that you can see won't be printed or if you save it as a pdf they won't be there they are purely there as a guide so what we're going to do is select these two cells go to layout and click merge and do the same to all of the ones that you need to merge and then what we can do, you can move individual lines by selecting the cells left and right of the line you want to move. Click and drag the line across. Do the same with this one. You don't have to do this, it is a personal choice. And if you want to make a bit more space over here, then we can move these two as well. Let's just move this line over. And then let's just move this line as well. Now go to table design and go back to border painter and then we can just select this line here and then this line, we have to click this line as well and then this one. Now sometimes you'll see that it includes this row as well so let's just deselect it and go to this cell and select bottom border again and you can see those lines will be exactly where you want them. And then again this cell, because bottom border is already selected, I don't have to go to the drop down, just click. Okay, so if I select bottom border on this one, you can see it's also selected the supervisor manager. That sometimes happens. The only way to sometimes get rid of it is go to table layout, split the cells into two. So split this long one into two, click OK. But move that center line over to marry up with this one then select these two cells, go to table design and select no borders and it will take off that line between or below this supervisor manager point and only allow the line to go here. Sometimes it takes a little bit of nurturing but eventually you'll get there. This one again I want the border line below so let's instead of using the border painter let's just go to bottom border. Here we want to merge them so go to table layout, merge cells and I'm going to merge all of these as well and then I'm going to move this line then select this cell table design bottom border and again bottom border with that one 
you can see once again it's selected the whole thing so let's go back one which is command and control Z I'm just going to move this over a little bit and then move that line so we just give ourselves a little bit more space here go to bottom border no it's done it again that's fine so what we can do is split this cell again into two move that line over and then if we highlight those two cells and this time we go to inside horizontal border it will just select that line there and then purpose of expense you want the whole line running across so go to bottom border and again on that cell bottom border so it does take some fine tuning sometimes but just keep with it if I now select this cell or this table and go down to view grid lines and take them off you can see how your table is looking so now we can go down to this table here and I'm going to go to table layout and put that title in the center then I'm going to select the titles along here go to table design and go to shading and pick a very light gray and then I'm going to do the same down the bottom here with the border lines I'm going to take all the borders out so go to no borders but I'm going to view my grid lines and once again I'm going to go to bottom border again here now here where we've got all these cash and credit cards I actually want to put just a tick box so I'm going to just move this line over so that the tick box I put in is just after the text same with this one just move that over and I'm going to move this one over and as you can see there's no box here so I'm going to have to split this cell so go to split cells two and then with that one we're just going to move it over so that we can put a tick box at the end same with this one we're going to put a tick box in you can line these up if you want to it's entirely up to you this one I'm just going to put in a bottom border and again I'm going to merge these because they will all just be one cell now what I'm going to do here is select all of those go to bottom border and also inside horizontal borders because we've selected three of those cells so you want the inside ones and the bottom one and now you can move over this line so that it just moves up to the text then again here we want that bottom border we want to split those cells sorry merge these cells and then here we can select those two go to table design bottom border and then inside border do the same with these two inside border which is already selected and then bottom border as well now we can go to border lines and take off the grid lines and then you can see the layout of your form once you're happy with that we'll quickly put a title in so go to insert text box draw text box click and draw out a text box the reason i do this is because i can move the title wherever i want to it just gives me a lot more flexibility select the text go to the home tab use this increase font size tool to make it as big or as small as you want go to center to center it if i deselect it you can see we've got this borderline around the outside which i want to get rid of so go to shape format this icon here which is the outline select no outline deselect you can have a look at where it is if you're not happy just go select it go to shape format align align to center and then you can use your arrow keys to move it up or down so now to turn this into a digital form you need to have the developer tab at the top here if you don't have it go to word go to preferences go to ribbon and toolbar then on this selection here go down to the bottom and select developer and click save your developer tab will then appear and it's this section here that will turn your form into a digital form and you've got lots of different options here so if I go to name here I want a text box to allow people to put some text in if I click on it you can see this shaded area comes up and if I do it again and click here again I want a text box 
And all you need to do is just keep going through your form and selecting a text box to allow your user to just use only the boxes that you've selected for text. Now I'm going to go through and put all these boxes in and then I'm going to show you how to customize them. So I'm just going to select all the boxes. Now in this one here, you can see I've selected a box. If I select it by clicking and dragging across it, press Command or Control C on your keyboard and then select the whole table and press Command or Control and V. That's a quick way of pasting them all in. But then if you go to Table Layout, go to this, which is the center align, and that will allow all those text boxes to be in the middle. Now here we would like some tick boxes. So we just go back to the Developer tab and we choose Checkbox. As you can see, these little checkboxes appear. And we just put them into the cells that we want them. And then once again, go down to the bottom here and click text box. And then I'm going to copy and paste them in. Then go to layout and select align to bottom left. And then I'm going to do the same here. Align to bottom left. Align to bottom left. Perfect. So now you've got all of these in, you need to protect your form by selecting Protect Form. Once you've done that, you can see all of these are greyed out. What it now means that if I try to click on anything other than these boxes, Word will put my cursor straight into the first available checkbox, which you can see is here, or Fillable Box. Again, if I try to click, click here, it will make sure my cursor is in the next box. And that will allow you to type, but I can't type anywhere else on this form. Now, if you don't like the gray boxes, you can go to shading and switch them off. So they won't appear, but they will be there. So again, if I try to click on name or department, it will go straight to this cell here. So down to the check boxes here, you just double click and the cross will appear and double click and it will disappear. Don't forget, if you go back to try and edit this, you will have to unlock the form by using this padlock here. And if you want to change the boxes, just use the shading so you can see where they are. So let's say I wanted a combo box here. I'm just going to select it and delete it. Go to a combo box. Now, if you right click on a combo box, you can go down to properties and your combination box will appear here. Now, this is for those boxes where you want a drop down. So you want to give people just a finite amount of options. So for example, you might want to put in travel and then you press enter, food, enter, fuel, enter. And then I'm going to put the title of that box in as well. So I'm going to put please click here and press enter. Now, in order for this to be the title of my box, I need to move it to the top using this arrow here. So just keep clicking until it moves to the top here. So go down to bookmark and let's just call this purpose and click OK. And you can see now we've got the please click here title. If I protect the form and take off the shading, so you can see this box appears here. So instead of clicking on the arrow, if you actually click on the text, you'll see that your options come up here. Let's click again and you can change those options. So once again, don't forget to protect your form and then you can just save this as a normal document and send it on to your recipient. If you can't be bothered to make this form, there is a link in the description below where you can download this form and make adjustments to it if you want to. I hope this has helped you today. If it has, please like and subscribe and have a great day.